Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. Today I'm joined by Steven from Wi-Fi. He has been on the channel a, probably a good while ago now at this point. You are currently on Testnet, so doing a catch-up to find out what's the latest with Vi Finance. Steven, very welcome back on. Thank you so much for having me, Paul, and it's a pleasure to be back on. Yeah, so look, let's jump straight into it. For people who haven't seen Wi-Fi before, give the high-level uh, elevator pitch of what Wi-Fi is, and we'll get into the specifics then. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say our entire motto, well, we're a DeFi ecosystem on Cardano, right? So we're build, we've are we got a lot of different products. Um, initially, as of even right now, we've got token staking, NFT staking. We have a lottery. We have governance. And we actually had the first NFT staking on all of Cardano. We made that back in October of 2021. Um, now, when we're looking at the at our next product that we're launching, sorry, is our DEX. Uh, so the DEX is what's currently on Testnet. Now, what makes our DEX a little different is the fact that we're launching with a bar. So that's the Vi bar. And that's essentially a distributive mechanism for our token. So we collect feeds that are generated from the DEX. We use these feeds to buy Wi-Fi back from the market. And then we distribute that bought Wi-Fi back to those that hold Wi-Fi and stake it at our bar. Right? So this is an inbuilt buyback mechanism uh, that's part of the DEX itself. Right? Uh, we also use, we also have an NFT. And um, that NFT has been around for quite some time now. So we did have the first NFT staking on Cardano. So that's uh, it's a year and six months since we launched the NFT. And that NFT uh, is also the royalties from those are also being used to provide to the bar. So we're taking the royalties from the NFT, using them to buy back Wi-Fi from the market, and then distributing it to our bar. Similarly with our lottery, 10% of everything that's collected in our lottery is distributed straight to our bar as Vi is Wi-Fi, yeah. So we're essentially building up an ecosystem which contains a lot of different products, and all of these products are being used to buy back Wi-Fi from the market to provide support to our liquidity farmers. So to provide support to those that are providing liquidity on our decks, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the fund that's the fundamental idea of Wi-Fi is that we want to create an ecosystem where we're able to support sustainable liquidity mining, whereby we can have a token that isn't just being used to be sold by those that earn it, but can actually be used to partake in a much wider ecosystem and can be used to give you access to more than just selling that token for profit. Yeah, that can be the downfall of a lot of platforms, especially when they launch first and yield farming might be higher in the beginning where tokens flood the market and there's a massive sell-off. We'll get into all of that type of stuff. So. What's out on Testnet right now is the DEX, which will be mm -hmm. the first product I suppose lots of people would look at for yourselves. I know you've had the NFT staking for a while. Actually, on the NFT staking, we would have covered this in a previous call, but it's not just Wi-Fi staking. Any, any project can actually come to ye and ye can set up the NFT staking, isn't it? Correct, yes. Yeah. So we can set up NFT staking for any project that wants it. We can also set up token staking for any project that stakes it, and also LP farms for any projects that want it. So we're actually launching with a few LP farms for a few smaller projects next week. Um, you'll find out. that They might even be out by the time this video comes out. Um, and we're also launching with, most immediately, Charlie 3 are launching a token token vault on our platform next week. We already have Cornucopius, so we've got a Copy Copy vault on our platform as well. Um, and we're getting some larger projects in that, you know, are interested in this service and want to be able to implement it into their ecosystem as well. Nice. And that is all smart contract based, is it? Where Correct. everything is handled. You don't, the, the projects don't send you a couple of million C3 tokens, for example, and it goes into the well, contract, is it? They send it to the contract. Yeah. They don't send it to us. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's, and that's exactly it. We're actually the first end-to-end uh, -end decentralized staking on Cardano. In fact, we're the only end-to-end -end decentralized staking on Cardano. So there's no other staking, whether you're doing LP farming, whether you're doing NFT staking on another site, whatever it is, all the rewards on these sites on Cardano are being managed centrally by the business that's running the staking product, right? Our smart contracts are the first contracts on Cardano that allow a project to just put the tokens into the smart contract, right? 
And then yeah. the smart contract manages all the payouts and all the rewards to everyone who staked. Okay, um, nice. We're very excited because we're doing our audit right now. This is jumping ahead a bit, but we're also getting our um, staking contracts audited as part of our DEX's audit. So we're very excited about that. Okay, so the current staking contracts haven't been audited yet, but actually when we were talking, your audit is nearly concluded anyway for for the DEX. Yeah, so we're, we're hopefully down for the last two or three weeks. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the DEX then. So the DEX is out on Testnet. DEXs are... Mm -hmm something we have a few of them already out on Cardano. So what's what's the setup for the Wi-Fi DEX? What type of DEX is it? Um, mm -hmm. Market orders, limit orders, what way is it gonna work? So it's an AMM, it's an automated market maker. Uh, so you can think of MinSwap or Wing Riders as an example. Of course, we do have our in-back buy, we do have our inbuilt buyback mechanism, which is one point of difference. Another thing that we're very proud of is we're going to be the first DEX in all of crypto that's going to be launching with, ah, that's our test net. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, While you're talking there, I'll show people. <laughs> um, we're going to be, see the APR is not there yet because it hasn't launched. We haven't launched the farms yet on our test net. Uh, we're going mm -hmm. to be the first decks in all of crypto that's got non-custodial LP farming. Right. And that's something we're super excited about. So what that means is that once a user creates or provides liquidity, right, they essentially instantaneously begin farming as soon as the LP tokens hit their wallet. And those LP tokens don't need to be staked on another, on another vault or don't need to be staked anywhere. It just stays in their wallet and they'll be farming. This okay. will, uh, those screens will all be up hopefully at the beginning of next week on our test net. So uh, maybe, maybe halfway through next week, but I'm super excited to uh, finally launch that. Now that non-custodial LP farming is really big because that means that now users that provide liquidity in our decks, those LP tokens aren't just locked somewhere that become and become unusable. And this is, you know, stuff that we're going to talk about soon um, in upcoming and people will play around with it, but we're going to be integrating the LP tokens themselves into our decks um, to allow for boosted rewards. And I, I'm super excited about it. I, you know, it's the first in crypto. It allows users to farm a lot more easily, you know? Yeah. So I suppose it means there's one less, and TX involved for people as well. And just mm -hmm. to break it down, when people normally come in and they want to provide liquidity, they want to start trading, provide liquidity, you come in, you come in here to add your liquidity. When you add it in, you get an LP token into your wallet. Generally, what happens then is you earn some of the transaction fees or the LP pool earns it. You own a share of the LP pool. So as the LP pool grows, then you you benefit from the fees. But normally then if you want to get involved in yield farming, you then have to go to another step and you send your LP token to a smart contract and you can start yield farming then. But that last step isn't going to count for ye. Every Everyone who has an LP token is automatically yield farming. Correct. Absolutely. And, and it's actually interesting. We recently had it pointed out to us that um, we should also consider uh, people who follow Muslim banking and don't believe in earning interest rates. So we might be creating an option for not earning interest um, for those. So that interest is, so that option is available, but that would of course be, you know, you select to not earn farm. You're not going to just not be given farm. <laughs> okay. So people would be basically saying, I don't want to earn as much yeah. as I possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really interesting, right? Cause um, when, when you run the numbers, it's about 15 to 15% or so on average are the LPs that aren't staked in a farm for any given token, right? Okay. And it, I really scratched my head for a long time about one, why is it so consistently, why is it so consistently such a similar number for so many LP pools, right? And secondly, um, there must be a reason that people are choosing not to engage, right? When, when with our system, everyone who has an LP is engaging which is fantastic for new users that aren't under, that aren't sure how to engage, and it's a lot easier, saves you time, saves you money. There may happen to be an audience that doesn't want to earn interest for whatever reason, and I don't want to alienate that audience from using our technology in the first place, because what we're doing with these LP pools, and we won't go into detail here, that we still have articles to come out on it, um, but we're allowing people to essentially layer their liquidity pool tokens, right? So if you've already got an LP token that's sitting in your wallet and you're not doing anything with it, 
why not actually match it with Cardano and put it into a second layer liquidity pool, which means you've got an LP token matched with Cardano, which means now users from a front end perspective, just you or I approaching the decks, we don't even have to supply liquidity at that point to be able to be involved in a liquidity pool. We could actually just go to the trade, choose to buy a liquidity pool token directly from a liquidity pool and trade out directly from our ADA straight into that liquidity pool token. And then because we've got non-custodial farming, that means a new user should be able to approach our decks, go to our trade screen, trade directly for an LP token, and then go straight to our farming page and see themselves start farming, right? The only thing they've had to do to begin engaging in liquidity mining is one swap, which is about, there's no way that you can get it simpler than that. It's a single swap. Okay, so it's all about making it as simple as possible for for the end user coming in. Absolutely, right? These systems are and, complex enough as they are. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think a lot of times we forget when we're involved in crypto for a while, even simple things, well, simple to us because we've been involved using a DEX or going out and trading, things that seem obvious now to someone coming in new, it's, uh, it's a completely different world and it's a different language. So... Mm -hmm. getting simple user interfaces is going to be very important going forward and on trading mm -hmm. will it be just ada to native tokens which is normally the standard we see or will we be able to go from say i have c3 because you mentioned it earlier i want to go directly to wi-fi can i do that or mm -hmm. so we're not going to have routed trading yet that is one of the first things that we want to implement we are launching with a zap uh, so like MinSwap, you can zap your liquidity straight in. Um, yeah. And we are also launching with some layer two liquidity pools as well as our bar. So we've got a few unique features that we're already launching with. And unfortunately, we just haven't been, because the standard is in Cardano to not have that, um, we weren't pushing that for our launch as opposed to other features that we're trying to get in. We do expect to have that. That is my first task straight after we launch. You know, I want to get that in ASAP. Because I want to, this is something else as well, you know, when we build DEXs on Cardano, something that I think is really important is that we try to make it as comfortable a transition for users from other blockchains as well, right? Yeah. You want it to be when they approach a DEX on our blockchain, they want to feel at home already. You don't want them to feel like, oh shit, I'm in front of something new and I've got to relearn it. Excuse my language. Um. So very part of very much of our a large part of our focus has been how do we make this DEX incorporate as many unique Cardano features as possible, but have the interface and the operability of it feel as comfortable and as at home to DEXs across the entire crypto sphere. Right? Yeah. And the, I think that that's a balance we're getting. We're you know, we're we're getting there. Yeah, because there's a lot and like when you look at TVL and stuff on Cardano, people are slowly coming in, but like that, there's a lot of people out on other chains. And when they do come into Cardano, you want them to be able to just pick up the same as they would on any other chain. This was the biggest mm -hmm. one right now is MetaMask covers a lot of different chains and people are used to using MetaMask and you want something that kind of mirrors that when they come in and we have new wallets coming out. There's, that's one thing I suppose on top of DEX is wallets is another thing that is in... Um, good supply on Cardano with lots of different types out there. And I think ones that are similar to MetaMask will do really well, as well as having the trading interfaces then similar. But on um, on the DEX, other DEXs on Cardano, they all use a batching, off-chain batching for transactions. Will you be using that as well? Or is there anything different there? No, we're going to be using off, we're going to be using the off-chain batching as well. Um, initially, the off-chain batching is going to be done by ourselves, but much like Sunday Swap, we're looking to work with um, pool operators to essentially okay. be able to offload that batching process to the pool operators. And it also gives the pool operators, particularly smaller pool operators, access to another income stream. So that's something that we can do to support the community. Yeah, that's always good to see. And in terms of the deck, so... People are using DEXs already. Have you anything else planned for trying to bring in liquidity? We see one, one way to do it, but it has its downsides is if you provide really high yield farming rewards, it can attract lots of people, but then, <clears throat> excuse me, it has the negative effect on the token price. I know you have the bar, which counteracts that a bit, but have you looked into liquidity and trying to attract users in? Mm -hmm. So at the moment, our, 
our goal is, of course, to launch this. Our big thing is the layer two liquidity mining, and we'll have more articles discussing that out soon. But that is a new tool in crypto that allows you to build hedges within the DEX itself. And that's something that I'll be getting to a lot more in the mathematics of it in my articles. But basically, it is a tool that if you're a DeFi head, that will already be of interest to you. If you already know that you can build internal hedges against your impermanent risk, right? that's already something that's going to attract some DeFi heads. So that's something that we're really pushing to as many DeFi groups as possible because that is a development that is new in all crypto, right? It's not just a development on Cardano. That's something that DEXs have never been able to do before in crypto, which is use those LP tokens as another, not just as a farming, but to actually use them as their own token, right? Now, when the other big one that after we launch our DEX that we're doing is, is our auto harvester, right? And our auto harvester is the last part to our ecosystem. That essentially allows users to just stake Cardano as an example, and then based on strategies, whether they want low, medium, or high-risk strategies, our auto harvester will essentially auto-select the liquidity pools for them to be engaged with, engage with those liquidity pools, farm for them, and then send them back the profits from that liquidity mining. So this is very similar to Yield, uh, sorry, to Yearn, if you've heard of Yearn, um, Harvest.DeFi, um, sorry, Harvest.Finance. Um, Just you know, there's a few. Yield Aggregator. Type of thing. Yeah, that's what some people like. Quite more a yield, aggreg yield aggregator is when you trade and it selects it for you, right? Okay. This is a liquidity aggregator, right? Okay. So, this, so is it I based aggregate on ADA or on the LPs. Yeah, exactly. So we aggregate liquidity and then we use that liquidity to supply different platforms, right? Okay. Now, in, in doing so, uh, we essentially want to create, again, it's all back to what you said before, right? Simplifying the process to the user. This all sounds really complex, right? But essentially, we want our, our ecosystem, if you want to engage with Cardano DeFi, all you'd have to do is come to our auto harvester or liquidity aggregator, press a button, now you're auto harvesting on MinSwap, ViFi, Wing Riders, right? You've done it in a click of a button and you're now in 10 liquidity pools. Then you decide you want to do a little bit of liquidity mining yourself. That's fantastic. You can come to our DEX, just select what token you want to liquidity mine on the trade screen. And then you say, I want to buy 500 order of that LP token. Type in 500, trade. Now you've got 500 order of that LP token and you're liquidity mining it. Right? Okay. So <laughs> we're basically trying to take the entire process of how the complexities of these systems and turning it into a single transaction process for the user. Yeah, and how do you find it on Cardano then with transaction fees and things like that? Do they play a, uh, a point much, in much, minimum? Much better than Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, Cardano don't have the best fees in the world. Um, and the big thing that hurts Cardano fees is concurrency, which is that every time you send a native token, you have to send it alongside another token as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I definitely think that most... You know, we certainly have a solution for it. Most projects have a solution for it to how to manage that asset flow. Uh, and with an, with a fee of, what, 0.3 Cardano, I mean, we're definitely one of the most cost-effective blockchains. That's for sure. So yeah. if, if, we're, if we're able to reduce from a user perspective, because they're all used to concurrency as well on Cardano, you know, you're always sending away an extra 1.2 Cardano, right? Mm -hmm. If we're able to get rid of one or two instances of you having to send away that extra Cardano, and if we're reducing the uh, mental load that's required to understand how to engage, that's where I consider us having done a good job. Yeah. Um, so that's the harvester. Is there a timeline on that? Is that this year or is that? I would further? like it to be by the end of this year as an initial format, as an initial form, but it could be next year. Okay. Um, there's that. That's there's four stages to it because we essentially want to integrate an AI. Uh, essentially a neural net auto harvester. So we have an AI that actually designs these strategies um, on behalf of the platform. So, you know, it's not set by a user, it's not created by us and then set, it's adaptable, acting in real time based on market conditions, right? And that a, that full AI integration is probably going to take us about two years, much like it just took us two years to build our decks. Um, but our initial integration, which would be set strategies that users are able to engage with by depositing Cardano and then taking part in a set strategy, we expect to have that able to have that up by the end of the year. 
Okay, and so first up then is the, well, you have products out there, but the DEX is what's next up. Any timelines on when that will go from testing at the minute? Early May. So I would say within three weeks, we should be on mainnet. That's my guess. Okay, and we can hold you to that, can we? <laughs> I hope so. Like, I really hope so. As I said earlier, before we just started, I have my meeting with the auditors tomorrow that I get a really firm answer. Um, <laughs> but I expect it to be the case. Yes, we haven't had any issues yet. So we're feeling really confident. Okay, great. And the bar then, where does that fit in? When does that launch with the DEX or is that? It launches with the DEX. It launches with the DEX. So the deck, the bar is already available for all users to engage with at the launch of the DEX. Um, when you provide your Wi-Fi to the bar, you mint a new token called X Wi-Fi, right? And much like an LP token, that X Wi-Fi represents your proportional ownership of the bar, right? Okay. And we've also got liquidity mining and liquidity pools for X Wi-Fi as well which means that we're going to have arbitrage opportunities between our bar and the X Wi-Fi token for any traders out there. And the other one that's going to be really fun in our layer two liquidity pools is we're going to have arbitrage opportunities between buying the liquidity pool tokens and minting and burning the liquidity pool tokens. So that's the one that I'm really excited to see how traders play around with, because that's going to be a brand new arbitrage system in all of crypto. So when you say minting and burning them, is that like creating, providing liquidity or then cash, mm -hmm. basically cashing in the liquidity? That's exactly it, right? So if I have, a, a, let's say like as an example, if I have a market where I can buy the Art of Wi-Fi LP directly from the market, and let's say the Art mm -hmm. of Wi-Fi LP is worth one Arta per LP, right? But then all of a sudden, Wi-Fi goes up 10%, right? And when you're minting the LP, it's costing you $1. ten to mint, which means it's costing you $1. ten to burn right? What happens there? Now you've got an arbitrage opportunity. I buy it directly from the market and I burn it to get the contents or vice versa. If Wi-Fi is going down and the LP value is going down, I sell it. I mint it on the market and then I sell it into the, I mint it, sorry, the LP, and then I sell it into the market to arbitrage because I'm minting it for less than I'm making. So, okay. sorry if that's sorry. super complex. <laughs> No, uh, just on the bar then for people who get involved in this, they, this is only for Wi-Fi because you'll be earning Wi-Fi on the other side. Will mm -hmm. X Wi-Fi be, that token be traded too? Yes, as well absolutely. As, yeah. So if you go to our decks, if you go to our homepage right now, you'll see that we've already got the liquidity pool for X Wi-Fi there, right? So we've got Wi-Fi X Wi-Fi and Arda X Wi-Fi. Okay. Right. And the reason for the difference here would be that so if we go back X Wi-Fi is getting the rewards. Yeah, so if we go back to our bar, the way that it works, every time that Wi-Fi is served to our bar, right, Wi-Fi goes in, but no X Wi-Fi is minted, right? So okay. imagine we have 100 Wi-Fi in the bar and you have 10 of those. And we just have a price of one Wi-Fi to one X Wi-Fi, right? Your 10 X Wi-Fi represents 10 Wi-Fi, right? Mm -hmm. We now serve 100 Wi-Fi to the bar from fees. Now you've still got 10 X Wi-Fi, but there's 200 Wi-Fi in the bar. So that means now one X Wi-Fi, when you burn it, you get back two X Wi-Fi, not one. Okay. Right? So, you're, so if you you're... look, if you put one, um, if you put one in the X Wi-Fi side, uh, X Wi-Fi, yep. Yeah. Yep. You'll see that's the current ratio for the bar. So one okay. X Wi-Fi is worth 1.3 Wi-Fi. Every time that serves, the bar serves, that number goes up, right? And our APY is based on the difference from when we first launched the bar. It's one Wi-Fi for one X Wi-Fi. We started a ratio of one to one. And in this case, it looks like it was we started a ratio of about 1.1. Um, okay. Yeah. And just on the buyback then, so all the fees on the platform are not all of the fees, but some of the fees on the platform will be going to buy back Fi-Fi. Is that mm -hmm. a continuous process or is it once a month or how does it's that work? Continuous, it's a continuous process. So what we actually do, um, what we're actually doing is we're reading. Okay. I don't want to get too technical here. We have a medium paper out in two parts called um, a, a dive into the bar. And what is X Wi-Fi that really goes into the function technically, right? But essentially, we have every liquidity pool that's collecting fees to trade into X Wi-Fi. 
Whenever that liquidity pool surpasses a threshold, anywhere between 10 and 100 Cardano, and that threshold is actually selected randomly every day. And the reason that threshold is selected randomly every day is we don't want these serbs to be um, we don't want these serbs to be predictable, right? We don't want users to be like, I'm going to get in just before the serve and get out. Yeah. So if we change the threshold of fees that needs to be collected every day on a random count, we don't know what pools are going to be served and at what time they're going to be served because we check every hour, right? So think of it as a continual process that's continuously checking to see if enough fees have been provided. And once it's determined that enough fees have been provided, again, between 10 and 100 ADA, depending on which hour we're checking, they're going to be served, converted to Wi-Fi, and pushed straight through. Okay. And LP providers, the fees that are taken then, is there a split on the LP fees between LP providers and what the protocol or what Wi-Fi mm -hmm. takes? So the bar gets 0.1% and the liquidity pool providers get 0.2%. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there is a I've... slight reduction on the liquidity pool provider side, um, but given that it's already only 0.3%. You're yeah, not, you're not so, in the green pools to make money off liquidity. Yeah, you'd. what I find is generally you need the yield farming on top of it to counter out impermanent loss or potential impermanent loss that comes in there. Um, anything else we haven't covered on what's coming then for Wi-Fi? No, I don't think there is anything that we haven't covered. Um, just if you have any questions, if anyone wants to ask any questions, please don't hesitate to hit us up on any of our socials i apologize for looking like i'm half dead i'm in australia so it's just late where we are and <laughs> i would also like to say thanks to anyone who has stuck through until this point in time you know it's it really means a lot to me and we put a lot of work into this and we're super excited to see see it come to fruition to see the community start using it on mainnet um and we're super excited with the position that we're in i mean we haven't even launched our decks yet and we've already got three million in tvl on our site and total value locked from our other staking endeavors. So I think that that's a really, really strong starting point to be at, particularly within the Cardano ecosystem. Yeah, just on the pairs then for when the DEX launches, will there be mm -hmm. a process for setting up the LPs or setting up the pools or what way will that work? Yeah, we're launching with about 70 pools made, <clears throat> right? We're not actually launching with a factory contract. We are planning on releasing the factory contract fairly soon after. We just want to make sure everything is fine. Uh, well, everything is fine is the wrong words. We want to make sure that we've got a consistent system for when someone uses a factory contract for it to load into our front end, right? And we haven't had enough time to work on that yet. So just when you um, say factory contract, is that for someone else coming in, creating the pool? Yeah, that's people okay. to just be able to come in and say, I want to put some random token and ADA, press the button and that liquidity pool is now made right? Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, I should define that. I always use jargon and I apologize for that. <laughs> no, no, sometimes I, I just try and break the words for people who might be even I hadn't come across factory contract before. So yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that's absolutely an yeah. answer. Too. Please, please correct me. I am. Um, I've been working in the industry for too long. <laughs> um, and we're and so we're looking at launching that very soon. But we are going to be launching with about 70 liquidity pools. And any project that wants to launch with a liquid wants to launch their liquidity pool can just send us a message. Um, we are actually already looking to be launching two new projects on our decks at launch. So we will be the first ever access of their tokens. Um, so there's there's you know, if anyone wants to come and have a chat to us about it, we're there. Please, we want to have a chat and you know get as many people on as we can. Yeah, and just on the uh, pools as well, we have double yield farms or we see this on some other DEXs where the token, the projects put up some of their tokens so you can earn Wi-Fi and you can earn the, the other project mm -hmm. token. Mm -hmm. Is that possible or is there any yes, lined up? We are, going to, we are going to be launching with a few double yield farms already at time of launch. Um, the, other thing, the other thing that's really excited is that for the Wi-Fi ADA pool, it's also going to launch with a double yield farm because you're going to be able to take that Arda X Wi-Fi LP, match it with Arda, and then get a boosted yield farm on it. So you're also going to be able to do some uh, boosted yield farming on your LPs themselves. Okay. I need to see some of these things in, in play, and I can do demos on them as well. I can do tutorials on them once they're live. Yeah. And I think they make a lot more sense when people see the step-by-step -step process. And that's going to be and that's going to be up uh, on our test net. Um, as I said, hopefully by the end of next week, all our farming will be up on our test net and you can start playing with it. 
Okay, nice. Uh, I think that's covered the main points I had. If yeah. there's nothing else from you, we'll wrap it up there, but I'll leave the closing you up so to much. yourself. Then, no, thank oh, you right. so much. It's been a pleasure. Anyone watching, thanks for watching. Think others can get benefit from this. Please do share it out. Subscribe. There'll be lots more videos like this coming, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.